this, you're going to say, I've never seen this in my life before. And that's going to be natural. But the way that you handle that uncertainty is what makes you a better engineer. If you can look at a problem and say, okay, well, this is similar to when I did coding in this language, or this is probably the same logic structure as this language, that could be the reason why you're able to, to confront the problem. Throwing your hands up and panicking not only makes you seem like you're incapable of handling the project, but it also makes your work suffer too. <clears throat> and your charisma obviously is basically how you come across, especially in this field nowadays, you know, if you know how to do something, that's great, but you have to tell people about it. You have to talk to professors, to, to, to your colleagues, maybe if you go into sales, uh, you have to be able to, to seem approachable, you know? If you're the kind of guy that gets it all done, and then you're just, you know, you're not approachable, and people ask you, okay, can you explain what you did? And then you're just sitting there quietly twiddling your thumbs, that's not gonna help anybody, you know? Uh, it, it should also reflect in, in the work that you do. You know, if you put your name on something, make sure that you realize that work, someone may never meet you face to face, and that work is all they have to judge you on. Is that, am I comfortable giving someone a schematic or a program with my name on it and associating that with me? And it's a little scary. You know, sometimes you have to think to yourself, maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but it does work. But organization, clarity is definitely part of that. Uh, one thing that, that also you have to come to terms with is the, is the criticism. As an engineer, you're always going to have conflicts of opinion. You're going to have people telling you, this is not the right way to do it, or you should have done it this way. Now, there's a difference between someone being a jerk to you and telling you, oh, you know, you're wrong, this is, this is not the best way, my way is better. But there's also, there's also probably some merit to that. You have to realize that the people that you talk to in your life, and this goes, this goes true for any field, the people that you talk to in your life are going to make you who you are. No matter how small the interaction is, maybe you know, maybe some of you guys won't be in this class anymore. Maybe some of you will be together until the last year. But the interactions that you have, you're going to take away something, if it's good or bad. You always want to try to find the merit in that and realize that I worked with an engineer that was that was a very you know very hard. Like he was very hard headed. He you know he always wanted me to do things a certain way, and I hated working with him. That may be true, but you probably learned something from him that you're going to take away, and it's going to make you the engineer that you are. Try to find the positive in everything that you do. Uh, you know, it's, it's very hard, especially nowadays, because you, you, you compromise the irrational and the emotional. The best thing you can do is just try to keep those things separate and realize that my skills maybe weren't the best way to do it. Don't take it as a personal insult. Take it as a criticism to better yourself. And uh, another, <coughs> another good point is keep a professional journal. Uh, I don't know if you guys, if you guys do that, uh, now, especially uh, in the next couple of years, you will be doing things in OneNote. I don't know if you guys used that before. But basically, OneNote uh, is, is a good tool, even if it's like a field note journal, you know, uh, if, it's a, if it's a little binder. Write things that you do down. You know, it's going to help you uh, maintain organization, and it's also going to keep you, uh, it's, it's going to keep your pride. Up. It's going to tell you, like, I've been doing so much stuff. You know, I've, I've worked with schematics, I've worked with programs, I've worked with circuits. And it's going to make you realize. You know, when you're in this field, especially when I was in school, this, I've been struggling with this for a long time. Every time I go to a class, you know, and people start talking about jobs, uh, I would always say, you know, I've been in school for so long, I've been doing all this stuff, but I feel like if I got out in the field, I don't know anything. And that's completely normal. You know, you do all this work, you do all these labs, and at the end of the day, you're like, this, this, is, this doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I've, I've been working with a light bulb for the last two weeks. But then, oh, who's going to hire me? You have to realize that. Everyone has that understanding. Everyone feels like they're, they're doing nothing. But when you go to the field and you have your first job, you're going to be very, very surprised to see what you actually do now. I'll give you an example. When I was with Dr. Rankin, we went to Jersey Shore Steel. And we did uh, some fiber optic work. And when they, when they first took me there, it was my first internship uh, in an industrial setting like that. Uh, we went over there. And uh, when, we were, when we were in that building, you know, I, they asked me to do all these things the first day. And I looked at the paper that, that, of tasks, and I automatically started to panic. You know, this is my first time. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, what if I don't do this the right way? And then if you realize what you do know, and you go step by step, you know what? That isn't that bad. I actually did something like that. The second one is not bad either. I did that before. And then, you know, you obviously have people to help you. Just because you don't know how to do something wholeheartedly, inside and out, doesn't mean that you don't know how to do it. You have to understand that there's going to be, like with everything else, practice and, and commitment. But if you display that desire to commit yourself, that's what the big difference is between the can do it and the cannot do it. And 
uh, to take pride in yourself is, is probably something that we all take for granted. Um, you know, especially because of the criticism that we get. A lot of times, you know, if it's a bad GPA, if it's a bad test grade, if it's the grade that you didn't want as a final grade in the class, sometimes you feel like you deserve more, sometimes you feel like you've not done your best. You have to remember that for where you are, compared to everyone else, compared to, to those that have and have not, you're doing something right. You know, you're, you're making the choice to come to school, you're, you're doing well in your classes, you're showing up. You have to focus on the positives. You know, in this, in this life you realize a lot of times I, uh, you question yourself. You know, you say like, I really don't know much, I'm not as smart as half the guys in my class. That happened to me all the time. You know, I always, I always thought that I'm going to be the one that's in trouble. Um, realize when you, when you do something that of, of any kind of value, the best thing you can do is go home and just tell yourself that you're proud of yourself. That's going to mean a lot to yourself. You won't even realize it, but you know, the fact is, I, did, I, I studied for a test and I got to be on it. Okay. But the fact is that you put in the time and you have something to look back on and your, your labor was, was seen in the final product. Your final projects, you know, your, your exams, your final test scores, your GPA, there might be good and bad. But you have to focus primarily on the good. Because if you keep looking at the bad in any situation, whether it's work or school, I guarantee you, you're going to start to slow down. Because you're, the, that, that negative energy is just going to basically curb your, your, your drive and desire and nothing's going to come out of it. Uh, lastly, if you guys have any questions in the next couple years, uh, I do graduate in December. If you guys have any questions, I will be leaving my, uh, my email here for you guys and uh, for, for any questions for interviews. If you have any questions about the four-year degree, I will be happy to answer them. Um, I hope that you guys were able to take something away from this. Uh, in the future, if you guys do need a copy of my resume, I will also be leaving it as a template with Mr. Calvert. So if the time comes where you guys decide, hey, I need, uh, I need the resume and you know, it's, it's something that I have to start working on, I will be able to provide that for you guys uh, and Mr. Calvert will as well. If you guys have any questions, you know, just shoot me an email, say that I spoke to you guys, and I'll be able to, to, to give you my best input. Um, I hope that you guys took something away out of this. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Um, when you get to uh, your future. And just, just please, please try to remember that even though the times you have ahead of you in this school may be tough, you know, maybe certain classes or certain skills, the bottom line is you're, you're only spending four, five years for the rest of your life to have a decent job and a place to go. <coughs> and, you know, a, lot, a lot of times, you know, in the moment, it sucks going to a test and knowing, like, I have to study for math today. Well, those eight hours you put in for this one year of your life, you'll carry over and you'll have that job title that no one can take away from you. And you can go get you know, your, your money, you can go provide for your family and get the things that you want. Uh, lastly, um, I wanted to show you guys some of these websites here uh, and my resume. So we'll start with the resume, I guess. Uh, this is a typical format for resume. I don't know if you guys have seen one before uh, or, or really had much experience, but basically the way these things work uh, very simple, is you have your, your name and your contact information on the top. And I can provide a copy of this for Mr. Caliber. So if you guys do have any questions or you need a copy, feel free to use mine. I'll, I'll leave it with him. Uh, and if you want, you know, Dr. Rankin, I'm sure he has a copy of it. Uh, you know, just put in your name and put in basically applicable information for yourself. Uh, and it always starts off with your contact information on top. Um, and then your, your education here, uh, your work experience, and then you have your, uh, your technical experience. And then on the bottom page are your references. The one thing you want to really realize here is when you have a resume, the big thing is you want to keep it a single page. You want to make it very clear and concise. You don't want to have you know, exuberant font. You want to make it appealing and very organized. Because the chances are there's a pile of them somewhere, and after you actually get the interview, they're going to look over your resume. They don't want to see you know, artsy fartsy text, and they, they want to see like all this uh, you know, all these nice graphics. They want to see what your name is, what you know, and why you're qualified, bottom line. You know, and they, in fact, they search through it and navigate this maze of, of, of jargon, it's not going to look good. Um, one thing I, I would make sure that you guys do is you always want to, to prevent yourself from looking at, uh, at generic terms. Saying, I have good communication skills is not good. Why do you have good communication skills? You've done presentations before. Uh, you know, I've done training seminars before. That kind of stuff. Uh, the, uh, the technical experience is really where you want to focus on your own stuff. If you look at this, you'll see very in-depth uh, kind of you know, examples. It says microprocessor operation and programming, and I list the languages. 
you know, you want to make sure that you can guarantee yourself that job by putting in specifically what it's about. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of this stuff comes right from their job requirements. Uh, if you guys have time, I encourage you to look at Indeed. I, I encourage you to look at uh, Monster.com, uh, internships. That's really where you want to go to find out uh, more about what this career path entitles. And if you guys have any questions, like I said, please feel free to contact me or ask Dr. Ragnan. Uh, any other fac faculty will be able to help you out. I hope you guys took something away from this, and I uh, wish you the best of luck. Yeah. All right, Thanks. great. Thanks, Les. Let's give him a hand there. Very good.